I'm surprised Intellect Devourers are even in Neil's world. Does that mean Mind Flayers are in two? Well, aren't Intellect Devourers from the Underdark? So they're probably just from some other plane or some other dimension that we've not seen yet, I guess. Would be what I would, uh, what I would assume. Actually, you know, one thing that I didn't realize was that I actually have a movement speed of nine. So I'm not slow. I can run. When he described me as a lather, I was thinking that I was like, you know, literally crawling, basically. But um, it is the thing from the, well, the thing from the Baldur's Gate intro is, uh, is the, uh, what are they called? I want to say Cthulhu, but they're not called Cthulhu. Ithalids. Ithalids. Ilithid? Ilithid. They don't exist in this game. Yes, they don't. Is there another name for them in second edition? Well, yeah, this is the adult version. I'm the lava version. I look like this. Like this. And the sun, you know, is falling lower in the sky. There's not many hours of daylight left. And... We probably need to act soon. So my thinking on it is that um, now that I don't think we can risk letting it reset. It gets only one power word per day and it gets one fireball deck per day. I think if we let it reset till tomorrow or whenever we can heal back up and recover, um, excuse me, the cost of the fight will be too high. I think the best thing to do is for Anton to go back to the group to grab like Brain Gang, Bash, Polar, Lord Khan, um, Jack. These guys with us, I don't think they are, right? But gather like the four knights, give Tyrael's gear to the strongest one, which I think is Vash. If we look at his stats, I think he's pretty good. Yeah, he's got 17 strength and 17 con, so if we give him the strength belt, uh, he's going to become pretty strong. Give him a plus 5 sword, he's going to be very strong. Uh, and fuck it out, guy's level 6, and he's got 54 health, that's insanity, what the fuck. Yeah, there's still like half a day of light, yeah, I was just being dramatic. Um, so Vash with Tyrael's gear could be good, um, Brain Gang uses a bow. You know, he could be useful as well. I think if they do that and attack, it'll be tough because the Death Knight can still spam its Ice Wall spell doing 3d10 damage. Um, hopefully that won't kill anyone outright. And it can defend itself with its Ice Walls and its Lair. Uh, presumably, there's going to be the Symbols of Pain and stuff there and the Banshee. It's going to be a tough fight, but it's low on health. It's probably got about 10, My dad was a death 10 health left. So Wacky. They just need to get to it, and it can be killed. Neil knows now. Somebody pointed out in the Reddit thread that he's seen. Could Tyrael have jumped further away to avoid the attack of opportunity? Uh, I don't really think so. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, maybe, you know, maybe he could mechanically, but you know, like if the Death Knight's here and Tyrael's here, if Tyrael just jumps here instead, I'm pretty sure the Death Knight could just move and get the attack of opportunity. Like maybe maybe mechanically he could have, but I feel like it would be a bit, a bit silly. I think losing the dex was dumb. Uh, maybe losing half of it would have been bad. I do see Neil's point though, because you can't exactly dodge and weave when you're in the air, can you? I think if anything, like just having an attack of opportunity was maybe dumb because he's still in her threat range. He's not leaving her threat range, and I think Tyrael can leap with his boots and stuff without really expending too much mental effort. I'm pretty sure he can still like defend himself as he's going through the air. Um, so I think the attack of opportunity is the issue. I think once you give the attack of opportunity, I think it kind of makes sense that there's no dex bonus to AC. But, uh, but yeah. How does the party know about the fireball and the powered gun? It's in the monstrous manual. So we can be pretty confident it can only do it once per day. Haven't you seen Yoda fight give that dex bonus? Yeah, exactly. Debatable, but far from the most wacky nail ruling. Absolutely. Absolutely far from the most wacky nail ruling. It's not even, not even close. I think the strength bell is just plus four strength. 
What rings was he wearing? Because he probably would have won if the stun failed. I'm pretty sure the power stun would have worked regardless of the ring of free action, if you recall us having a similar discussion about that during the episode. Seems like the Death Knight's not affected by magic wackiness. Yeah, because he's not casting the spells. They're innate abilities. I'm not sure why that makes a difference, but apparently it does. Do you know she can't heal? Uh, I don't know she can't heal. I, I actually half suspect that Power Word Kill cast on herself might full heal her. In the same way that, like, you know, uh, if you cast heal on undead, it can act, it can kill them. Oh, I absolutely think the Frost Ranger should go in for the fight with Anton, yeah. <clears throat> After this, a fight with Scoria seems like a TPK. Okay, well, two things to say about that. Number one, if we're going to TPK, then the best place to do it is against Scoria, right? I mean, at, at that point, yeah, there's nothing else to do. Number two, I don't really know how you can draw that conclusion. I think it's a totally different fight. I mean, I still think there's a very, very good chance that fighting Scory would be a, a TPK. But uh, with the with the Ion Stones that we need, perhaps we can have a chance. Undead regenerate HP in Neil's world, right? Um, I don't know. Do they? I, I, it's been a while since I watched any hit with Necromancers. Neil hinted about it healing in the Discord. Would I be a bad person to talk about it? Probably. Probably. As long as it doesn't full heal. But even if it full heals, I still think it can be beaten by the group. Is there any way through the ice dome? Yeah, there is. Um, I think it hurts, though. We looked at the spell. It's, it's a good spell, Wall of Ice. Obviously, being able to cast it at will is something else. Um, she can cast it as, like, walls as well, not just the hemisphere. So she can, like, put her blockers along corridors. Uh, a sheet of strong hard ice is created. The wall is primarily defensive, stopping pursuers. The wall is one inch thick per level of experience of the wizard, so 20 inches thick. The A 20th, 20th level wizard could create a wall of ice 200 feet long and 20 feet high. Fucking hell. Any creature breaking through the ice suffers two points of damage per inch, so to break through would cost 40 health. Fire using creatures suffer three points of damage per inch while cold using blah blah blah. blah. The plane can be oriented in any fashion as long as it's anchored. Um, okay. Magical fires such as fireball and fiery dragon breath melt a wall of ice in one round. Okay, so the potions of dragon breath should be taken as they can be used to uh, break through the walls of ice. Yeah. I do feel like Moot was being a bit of a baby. What are you going to do? Hopefully you'll feel better when he gets to be the hero next episode. Who has the potions? Uh, I think they're just on the party sheet. I don't think I've got them. Oh, here you go. I've got them. Two potions of fire breath. Oh no, we can't get them. Shit. They're on my... Fuck. Don't you think if all the party goes in you'll be obliged to share the loot? Tell you what, you guys are all obsessed with loot. We don't really need, like, it's sword. If it really is a, a firebrand sword, will be good. And if it's got, but the rest of it's stuff, probably not even that useful for us. We don't really need it. And no, I don't think we would be obliged anyway. Death Knight has a plus three sword. I think it's got a firebrand sword, which is uh, in the DMG. So it's basically a plus three sword, but it acts as a ring of fire resistance. And it's plus six against creatures that use fire or live in fiery environments. Also has a 50% chance of extinguishing any fire with which it's thrust into. Yeah, power word kills down, the fireballs down. That's what I'm saying, we've got a decent chance of killing it. I really think that Anton can probably 1v1 her without, as long as it doesn't have power word kill and the fireball. So it's just a case of getting up to it. So I, I think Anton can do it with the with the rest of the crew. And like, yeah, they're there for a reason. The Frost Ranger should definitely come. And uh, yeah, you need to spell a potion. Um, if it's like an ongoing effect, I think, yeah. If you drink a potion of fly, it can get dispelled. 
if you drink a potion of healing, you can't dispel it and then remove the remove the healing. Yeah, Neil said that the anti magic potion failed outright. It does still have one dispel magic, yeah. Let Anton be the hero. Anton's like always the hero. When does Imric get to be the hero? When has Imric ever been the hero? I ask you. All of ice cannot form in an area occupied by physical objects or creatures. Its surface must be smooth and unbroken. Magical fires, yeah, so... <clears throat> I don't know, depending on like what's going on. Maybe not. When you just freeze to death? Yeah, maybe. It probably needs to be kept somewhere warm. You stay polymorphed if you get knocked out? No. I believe you return. Wizard can end the spell at any time when voluntarily returning to his own form and ending the spell. He regains d12 hit points. The wizard will also return to his own form when slain. Though no, actually, knocked out won't, won't remove it. It would just be it would be just like Neil though to uh spare Tyrael with the power word kill. And then just on a whim permanently polymorph me into a lava and not allow it to come back. Like, yeah, that'll teach you, Nick. No, I can't believe you're doing it. I'm only joking. I don't think I'll be permanently polymorphed. I feel like if I was, I would have been told last session. Because it would be it would be very cruel. To leave me hanging for a week, make me come to the next session, only to tell me that it's permanent. My biggest fear here is that we'll find the Ion Stones and Neil will just roll on the table and we won't even get one of the Dispel Magic the, the Dispel Counter Stones. When specifically I want three of those Dispel Counter Stones and I'm worried that we won't get them and then it'll be technically this whole thing will have been for nothing. That is my major worry at the moment. She did specifically tell you the stones we needed were in Salad and Keep, but does Neil care about that? I don't know. You remember waiting for Dragon Loot for three weeks after Abraxia? I do indeed. Good times. What are you going to do with the minor magic items? Well, the Hourglass, the Mortar and Pestle, the, I mean, that's all going to my Wizard Tower in the Keep. Absolutely. I am going to have a Keep full of magical brooms, magical Hourglasses, magical Mortar and Pestle. pestle. Absolutely. It's going to be great. Do you think the Death Knight's the last big baddie? Probably not. There's probably going to be something where the Iron Stones are. Has to be some sort of snow avalanche. Oh, man. What I want... I've been saying this to Neil a bunch of times that he should have done it in Frofro. Um, is like... Some sort of... Yeah, boy. Absolutely tremendously huge giant ice spider. Like, I was imagining in Frofro... Like, looking at a mountain range and seeing like... A fucking spider on a web like across the side of a mountain and then like the whole area around it could be like webs with like loads of other spiders you'd have to fight to but you could like fucking see this thing like crawling across the the mountain range that would have been fucking terrifying would you fund future expeditions uh imric maybe would go back but i don't think he would send other people like without him i'm very interested in finding out what the world ending catastrophe the glaciers managed to stop yeah yeah you're right Whatever was happening was going to kill everyone because when we said that we were from far away, that scholar was like, oh, we, we won then. Meaning that the fact that there's any people alive anywhere means that they were successful. I mean, chances are Glacier is going to be one of those things that ends up still being a mystery. I don't think we're going to get like complete answers to what happened there. And I think that's good. I think a future campaign... Um, oh, did, I, did I say this to Neil or were we just talking about it on the stream? The next campaign we should do should be set in Glacier during like whatever was going on that was going on. That would be so cool. It could be whole new area, whole new NPCs, massive time skip, so or time like past time skip. So everything could be new. Neil's got the creative freedom to do whatever he wants. But then at the same time, there could be like just really cool little throwbacks to like things that we'd seen in the future when we were there. You know what I mean? That would be so cool. Is there any reason a time pool couldn't give information about Glacier? Well, not like if you just read the words of the spell time pool, but if time pool works by the gods showing you things that happened in the past and the gods aren't there looking at Glacier, then they might not know or be willing to show it. Would Neil do a world where paladins exist? Paladins exist in our world, in, Ar in Arcadia. We've seen a few paladins. I played a paladin. 
in one in a one shot. Uh, Georg killed a paladin that was trying to hunt him. Um, there's been a few here and there. Can you walk us through the thought process of when you decided to turn into a grub? Uh, yeah, I wanted to be small and quick so I could evade the ice wall.